here are the eyes in this area. It's called the ampullae of Lorenzi, which are tiny little pores. The shark detects electric fields emitted by fish. Right here, these two circles are called the spiracles. They supply oxygen directly to the eyes and brain of the shark. These slits are called the exterior gill slits. Water comes through the mouth, passes over the gills, and exits through the gill slits. Then you have the pectoral fins. This one's the anterior dorsal fin. We have the second dorsal fin. At the end of the body, we have the caudal fin. There's also a la lateral line which goes along the body and it sends vibrations in the water. The shark also has nostrils which detect blood. The skin of the dogfish shark is composed of small structures called denticles. These denticles reduce the friction of water on the shark as it swims. They give the skin a rough sandpaper-like texture that helps protect the shark from the fatal attacks of other predators. This is the mouth, and it has a small crescent shape. Once the shark allows water to enter its mouth, it goes through the pharynx, over the gills, and finally leaves through the gill slits. The teeth of the shark are small with sharp points that bend backwards. They are organized into several rows and are used for grinding rather than tearing. These are the external gill slits. The gills of the shark aid in respiration. There are usually five to seven slits. In order for gas exchange to occur correctly, water has to constantly flow over the gills. This is the heart and they have a two-chambered heart with an atrium, also called the auricle, and a ventricle. It's an S-shaped tube that is located in the head region of the shark. The blood is pumped by the heart through the afferent brachial arteries to capillaries in the gills where the blood is oxygenated. The blood then flows through the efferent branchial arteries, then through the tissues of the body, and then back to the heart and veins. This is the heart of the shark. This is the sinus venosus, the atrium, the ventricle. These are the valves. And this is the cornus arteriosus. This is the liver. It, uh, it's the largest organ lying within the body cavity. It has two main lobes the right and the left lobes. And then the third lobe is much shorter. It's located medially and it contains the uh, green gallbladder. The liver is also rich in uh, oils that gives the shark buoyancy so that it can float and swim. Um, the oil is called squaly. So that's something. The gallbladder is right here. It's attached to the ventral surface of the median lobe of the liver. And the esophagus is in this region right here. It's a thick muscular tube extending from the cav top of the cavity to the oral cavity and the pharynx within the stomach. And then the stomach is this right here. It's a J shape. It has a cardiac part and pyloric part functions in the digestion and then this is the spleen it creates red blood cells and is a main part of the shark's immune system and then this is the intestine also called the spiral valve and it um, it internally twists it's coiled to increase the surface area of the intestines so it can increase the nutrient absorption and the intestines of the shark are much shorter than those of mammals, so that's something. And that's it. These are the little spirals mm -hmm. inside of the intestine, the spiral valve. You can see them spiraling around. So we just
just cut open the stomach and inside it has recently eaten a fish. And here are the little parts. The kidneys on the dogfish shark are located along the sides. Here's one right here. The kidneys, um, they run the full length of the body of the shark. And nitrogenous waste is removed from the blood and prepared for excretion. For females, it's useless up at the front. Um, but on a male, it's an accessor accessory gland for sexual reproduction. And then, and the intestine go leads into the rectal gland, right here. It's a small organ that opens up it into the rectum. It acts as a salt gland and removes excess salt from the blood. And that's it. In the reproductive system of the dogfish shark, the females have cloaca, which is this, this little flap right here. It uh, helps in the elimination of uh, urination and fecal waste, as well as a way through which babies are born. Dogfish sharks use internal fertilization while mating. They use ovoviviparous development, where eggs are fertilized, and they actually hatch inside of the um, inside of the female body which is right here. These are the eggs. This one's pregnant. So these are the eggs and then there's another developed little baby shark. You kind of see its fin in here. Um, the oboviviparis is also called a placental viviparity. There is no placenta to nourish the pups so they either eat unfertilized eggs like these or each other in the womb for nutrients. Um, and that's about it. are all the babies. And each thing that is attached to it is the placenta. She doesn't count six. It's like an egg. <laughs> this is the brain of the shark. It runs into its spinal cord. Dogfish sharks use olfactory lobes, that is part of the brain that interprets smell. The cerebrum is the part of the brain that interprets sensory information and controls behavior and instincts. Also, the optic nerve carries sensory information that the retina, from the retina to the optic lobe. The cerebellum is part of the brain which controls muscle impulse, coordination, reflexes, and motor skills. The medulla oblongata is part of the brain which controls unconscious behavior and the automatic nervous system.